Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Get Moving and Shape Up. My name is Brock Armstrong, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. You've likely heard of massively multiplayer online gaming. You know, games like World of Warcraft, Fortnite, Rift, or World of Tanks are all extremely popular in the gaming community. But this idea of working with or against other people around the world from the safety of your own home has spread to fitness and exercise. And I, for one, think this is pretty great. Now, if you are a serious cyclist or runner and you're dedicated to your performance goals, then you'll likely find yourself running or riding or lifting indoors at some point during the year. And traditionally, this has been a pretty boring affair that involves staring at a motivational poster on your wall while you're trying to drown out the sound of your own heavy breathing with some rockin' tunes. But lately, there are a bunch of cool apps that certainly make your time on the trainer, or what we like to call the dread mill, both more productive and more entertaining. But before I get into those, let's talk psychology. There's a term in psychology that's known as the audience effect. And the audience effect is simply something that happens when a person's behavior changes because they believe there is someone else watching them. Now, these effects have been known about for well over 110 years, but the cognitive mechanisms of this audience effect, well, they still remain unclear. The earliest study that looked into whether or not having an audience could affect a person's behavior is found in the work of Triplett back in 1898, who found that cyclists were faster when competing against each other than they were when they were just competing against themselves, or the clock. Now, like I said, this effect is one of the oldest phenomenons that has been studied in psychology and was the subject of an intensive study back in the 1960s and again in the 1970s, but then with less and less interest over the last 40 years. But in a review called Audience Effects, What Can They Tell Us About Social Neuroscience?, Researchers once again examined the hypothesis, and they concluded that, and I quote, Unpacking the simple question of what changes when someone watches may have important implications for our broader models of human social neuroscience and the interactive behavior across diverse populations. End quote. Now, what I find really interesting is that the audience effect does not apply to just us humans. I mean, a quick PubMed search shows that mice perform differently when they have an audience. And I recently heard about a fascinating study from back in 1969 at the University of Michigan, where a professor named Robert Zanjonk set up a miniature stadium that housed a racetrack for cockroaches. Then he lined it with cockroach bleachers for cockroach fans to watch from. And I give a nice tip of the hat to Sweat Science, or Alex Hutchinson, for putting this study on my radar. Now first, Professor Zadjonk had cockroaches run straight through the stadium by prompting them with a bright light. Now, for half of the experiment, they ran through the stadium all on their lonesome, and for the other half, they ran with some cockroach fans sitting in the cockroach stands. Were they cheering them on? Well, perhaps not, but they were present, and that is all that was needed. Now, next, the professor had the cockroaches make a few 90-degree turns during their stadium run, using more lights to steer them around. Now, he did this again with and without the roach audience. Now, in the end, the professor found that when performing the easier task of running straight through the stadium, the roaches performed better with an audience. But when it came to the slightly more complicated task, they performed better alone. Now, when you think about this, does that sound familiar? It does to me, and I guess that means that we're a lot more like our creepy, crawly friends than we'd like to believe after all. Okay, now what does this all have to do with fitness? Well, Let me tell you. You've likely seen or perhaps even purchased for yourself a fitness video of some sort. I mean, back in the day, I had a couple of Tai Bo videos on VHS tape that I'd put on and I'd clear the furniture out of the living room and I'd use it to get my sweat on. Now that was back in the early 1990s and the industry has really blossomed since then. Now you can log on to YouTube and search for pretty much any workout that you can think of and there's likely a video for it. 
Uh, honestly, I just searched for hat workout and sure enough, there is one and I'll put a link to it in the show notes at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. Look for episode 392. But if you're like me and you're doing those tie bow workouts in your MC hammer pants and a cropped t-shirt, well, you likely encountered a lack of motivation when you're bouncing around in your living room all by yourself. You likely don't feel all that much shame in skipping the odd rep or fudging some of the moves or occasionally just wandering off to the kitchen to get a sip of water. Well, that is where these massively multiplayer online training platforms come into play. Just like their video game predecessors, platforms like Zwift, Peloton, Lift Sessions, VirtuGo, Road Grand Tours, and OneLap, well, they don't just involve you. They involve anyone else who happens to be online and interested in the same workout as you are. So, from the comfort of your own home, you can race against friends or foes from around the world in real time on a race course or workout of your choosing. Or you can virtually attend a live workout session or simply use proprietary gear and software to take a class with live feedback from a coach. Now, unlike the videos that you can download, these are much more interactive and personal and more fun. Athletes like you from around the world can ride or run or exercise with each other in 3D generated worlds or via Skype-like interface. For the most part, all you need to do is connect a specific type of device like a bike trainer, treadmill, power meter, heart rate monitor, or so on, and have a device to watch the workout on. Now, one of the most popular platforms out there right now, with imitators nipping at their heels, is called Zwift. That's with a Z. Now, Zwift is a turbo trainer game that lets you link your turbo or smart trainer up to your computer or iPad or iPhone or Apple TV, which then allows you to ride or run with other people in a virtual environment. Not only does this help to alleviate some of the boredom that's associated with indoor training, but it also elicits a heavy amount of what we were talking about before, the audience effect. For example, Canadian professional triathlete, winner of the 2017 ITU Long Distance Triathlon World Championships, and second place finisher at the 2017 Ironman World Championships, Lionel Sanders, posted this on Instagram just the other day, and I quote, Entered in a race called the Iron Goat on Go Zwift today. Should have read the description. Intention was to sit in and draft the whole race. Turns out, it hits every hill in London. 70 minutes later, at 380 watts, no problem, and this is the end of my final attack in an attempt to break away. Pro tip, read the description before entering in the race. Hashtag no limits. Now, Lionel also put an accompanying Instagram video which shows him grunting with effort and literally dripping with sweat. Now for me, I find it not only refreshing to see someone of his caliber suffering as much as the rest of us, but it also speaks volumes to how this platform encourages even someone like him to push harder than he intended to during that training ride. If it works for someone like Lionel, it'll certainly work for me. Now, people who use that same platform as Lionel Sanders, the one called Zwift, not only compete against other riders, but if you're interested in specific training sessions, well, you can access workouts that are designed by professional coaches as well, and these workouts can be completed in a group or all by yourself. Now, one of the things that Zwift boasts about is that their game can be better than outdoor riding due to the elimination of things like weather, traffic, time constraints, and distance from other cyclists, which they say, and I quote, take the fun out of it. Well, I agree in principle with this idea, but as I've written about before, I'm a huge believer in being a pedestrian. So yes, this is a great way to get a great and a specific workout and also a way to stay safe and warm on a cold, snowy winter day, but it is not a replacement for actually getting out there on your bike and practicing the technical aspects of <laughs> riding in the weather, traffic, time constraints, and distance from other cyclists. 
Now, moving on from Zwift, a Lyft session is a live online training session with an elite coach who is virtually there with you, providing feedback, correcting your form, and also pushing you to work harder. They do this by using live audio and video technology, similar to Skype or FaceTime, and are available in both group and one-on-one -on -one formats. Now, this experience is really as close as you can have to having a personal trainer drop by your home without having to shell out the bucks for having a personal trainer drop by your home. Now, the next platform I want to talk about is called Peloton, and that one is described as live studio cycling or running ready when you are. Now, it features a slick and sturdy bike or treadmill that combines some real high-end tech with access to a wide range of workouts anytime your schedule allows or on demand. Both the bike and the treadmill have a tablet screen attached right there at eye level where you watch your instructor as they guide you through the workout. Now, okay, I'm not going to go through every single option that's out there because I think you're getting the idea that these things are fun and can be pretty motivating. And for a platform like Zwift, all you need is a turbo trainer. Now, if you really want full immersion and you have some money to spend, then a smart turbo trainer is a super fun option. This also goes for Virtue Go, which is actually still in beta at the time that I'm recording this, and Road Grand Tours, and a few others. For the platform called Peloton, well, you actually need to shell out for one of their branded stationary bikes or treadmills. And these things are pretty slick, but unlike purchasing a trainer for your bike that you can also ride outside, well, you're stuck riding and running in your basement or the spare room with this one. For the platform called Lyft, to do their sessions, you only need a Chrome web browser on any laptop. And for their one-on-one -on -one personal coaching sessions, then Lyft is available through Chrome or Firefox web browser on any laptop or Android tablets or through the Lyft app for iPad. So depending on your fitness needs, your challenge desires, and your annual income, there seems to be an option for pretty much all of us. And as someone who's lived most of his life in locations where the winter weather is actually trying to end all life on this planet, I'm totally in favor of any way to make being active indoors easy and more fun. While I am constantly encouraging you to move your bodies in incidental ways throughout the day rather than relying on one single workout to contain your entire day's movement, well, Hitting your fitness and your performance goals often relies on the ability to work out in some very specific ways, and these options that I just talked about are certainly making working out at home a lot more fun. Plus, just like those cockroaches running in their little stadium, or the mice that are choosing their mate, or the cyclists who were tested more than 110 years ago, having an audience, virtual or not, can certainly be a motivator. One that goes well beyond the motivational poster that you put near your weight bench or simply relying on your own best intentions. If these massively multiplayer online training platforms can make an athlete like Lionel Sanders nearly drool with effort, well, it can likely help you break through your own fitness and performance goals. All right, my name is Brock Armstrong and I'm the Get Fit Guy, asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit.